07 Commanders and welcome aboard. In this video, we'll be tackling the things you need to know to head out and engage in asteroid cracking mining. Cracking rocks can be a fun and lucrative pastime. It's very different from surface mining, which I covered in a previous video, although some of the equipment and techniques remain the same. As stated in the previous video, you can really do this with any ship, but getting started with like a Cobra Mark III, or in this case, NASA Explorer, can give you a bit of a head start on the profits. To get started, there's a checklist of equipment that's necessary for the budding rock hopper. Number one, detailed surface scanner. I put this first because I always forget this one. This will let you find the hot spots that you're after. Today, we're going after void opals in the Boran system. Number two, pulse wave scanner. This is the piece of technology which will light up potential rocks for us to crack, but it's not infallible. You will get a lot of false positives. We'll talk more about the tips to spot the real ones later on. Number three, the seismic launcher. This is the fun part. It launches charges that will detonate after a brief amount of time. Getting the right amount of oomph is what makes cracking fun. Number four, abrasion blaster. One is fine. I like to take a couple if I can. It gives you a bit more spread to affect the surface deposits so you can abrade for extra fragments. Number five, collector limpet controllers. Because we ain't trying to scoop this up manually, right? Number six. A refinery. Any size will do, as long as we're not going after multiple resources. Number seven, cargo racks. Gotta put your cargo somewhere, right? Number eight, prospector limpets. A size one is all you need, and it'll provide you with the information you need to start mining a rock. Number nine, shields. For my surface mining guide, I skip shields, but for core cracking, you'll definitely want a bit of coverage. The detonation blast can be pretty substantial, and if you're caught too close to the rock when it blows, you have a good chance of damaging or even losing your ship. Number 10, finally, oh, limpets. Grab at least 75% of your cargo worth of limpets. If this is your first time out, or even your second or third, you'll spend a lot of time sorting through false positives until you get the knack. Advanced maintenance at a station will allow you to get as many as you can hold. To get started, I already mentioned I'll be heading to Boran and Planet A2 Ring Bravo to find some void opals. Again, I highly recommend the miner's tool from EDDB. Prices fluctuate rapidly since the economy update. Once we've arrived, pick a hotspot from your nav panel and head on in. Upon dropping into real space, take a minute and look around before you start mining. There's a good chance for an NPC pirate encounter, and if you have already started bringing valuable cargo on board or are moving from a different spot, they will attack. Now that you're in the clear, start sending out pulse waves. I usually just hold the trigger down and start looking for popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. This is a popcorn asteroid. For whatever reason, it's the right one to go after. You can see it kind of looks like a nicely puffed piece of popcorn, hence the name. You can check out other asteroids, but 99% of the time, they'll be false positives and have worthless materials. So we know the rough shape, but we also need to be watching for the brightness as we cruise around. Oops, guess we should be watching where we're going too. The brighter an asteroid is, the better chance it'll have the core we're after. Although, as you hold down the pulse wave scanner and get closer to the asteroid, you may see it dim down. Congrats, you found a false positive and can safely leave it behind. You can always fire off a prospector to verify, but you'll soon develop a gut instinct on which rocks are worth investigating, just like a real crusty old rock hopper. For now, keep flying and scanning. This part of the hunt can take a while. Worth mentioning is, I usually pick a navigable direction to fly towards, so I don't end up flying in circles and checking rocks I've already been by. I don't recommend heading to the waypoint for the hotspot, but instead pick the planet you're near. In this case, I'm trying to keep myself flying to the right side of the planet for orientation. After a while, you'll find a Goldilocks rock that seems just right. 
Launch a prospector limpet and target to get the report and look for those magical little letters down there. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. At this point, take a second to orient yourself around the asteroid. You'll be looking for little fissures that dot the rock that you can target. They should look like they have a little letter V in there. This is where the cracking mini game starts. Bring up your seismic charge launcher, target one of the fissures, and then hold down the button on the launcher and charge it all the way up. Let it go to send the charge and hopefully it'll stick to the fissure you launched it at. If it bounces off, just try again, line up a better shot and go. If it bounces off, just try and line up a better shot and try again. If it landed successfully, your top right display should now have a bar graph with a bunch of spiky lines. The idea is you want to get those lines to be firmly in the middle portion of the display. If you have too much charge loaded or not enough, you won't get a clean crack and will lose valuable materials. You may also notice that there's a timer now. Oh good, nothing like a deadline to get the blood pumping. Pick another fissure and charge up your launcher and keep landing them. If you're getting really close to hitting that middle zone, maybe charge up a launcher a little bit less, like to a two charge. You want to be right in the middle of those two gauges. If you mess up and have gotten too much power and have gotten into the top readout gauge, you can go to your one panel, contacts display, select a fissure you've set a charge on and hit disarm. It'll take a few seconds, but you can see the bar graph drop back down and send a weaker charge in its place, or whatever you need to do to keep it in that sweet spot. Once you've gotten your charges set, you want to back off to about one kilometer from the target. Remember what I was talking about with the shields? Things get real explodey really quick. You can also manually set off the explosion using the same method for disarming. Just pick the other option. If everything went right, you should be treated to one of the most satisfying sounds in the game. If you failed to get a clean crack, you can still salvage your rock by finishing the crack. You just get a lesser payout. Deploying. Once the core is cracked, it's time to get those limpets collecting. Don't forget to open your cargo hold and wait while the limpets start loading into your refinery. This doesn't mean you get to just sit there though. You brought those abrasion blasters for a reason. Start maneuvering around the ice and blasting free any deposits that are lurking on the surface to maximize your time investment. Once your collectors are all done, close the cargo hatch and start hunting for another rock. And that's really all there is to it. Once you spend some time out there in the ice, friends, you'll start to develop those instincts about which rocks are worth looking at and the best way to set your charges. You'll be making money in no time. Once you're full up or just done for the day, you can find places to sell via the Miner's Tool website that I've linked below. Pay attention, though, to how recently the numbers were updated because the economy and prices change rapidly. Anyways, I hope this helped you out. If I missed anything or you have any tips or tricks of your own, please leave a comment. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons as they really help out, or you can catch me live on Twitch. Either way, fly safe, Commanders, and see you next time. And of course, don't forget your limpets. What? What? No! <laughs> All powered engines, go, go, go! Uh...